Do you know sink foil? Sink foil is a plant in the rose family. There are over 300 species of sink foil in the world. Now in Iowa, the Iowa Wildflower app indicates that there are at least 13 species of sink foil in Iowa, and over half of those are native. So what does sink foil mean? Sink foil is a French word, and sink stands for five, and foil means leaves, so five leaves, which is another name for sink foil. It also has the name silverweed, uh, barren strawberry, and potentilla. I don't know if I said that right, potentilla. Um, lots of, and those are just a few to mention. There's a lot of names for sink foil. So I am in the Hanson Prairie in Saragota County, North Iowa, just north of Clear Lake, Iowa. It is the first week in June, and the sink foil that I'm after blooms in June and July. So we are looking at prairie sink foil, or also called prairie or tall sink foil. Prairie tall sink foil. So that's the flower we're gonna look for today. It likes full sun, as you can tell, it is a full sunny day, and we're away out in the prairie, no cover, and it also likes dry feet, meaning that it likes dry soil, kind of rocky or sandy soil. But it is also an indicator of a good prairie. You're not gonna find tall prairie sink foil um, in deserted or disturbed areas or in uh, parking lots or those types of places that you might find a weedy wildflower. It is an indicator of a great prairie. And so we are at the Hanson Prairie. Uh, this is a new prairie. It is uh, restored. It used to be tilled and the Hansons uh, donated it to Saragota County and it was planted about three or four years ago. So going to take a look at tall prairie sink foil. So stick around. Let's take a look at the flower first. I love this delicate flower. If you were to ask me if I had a favorite wildflower, first I'd say, well, which month? Because it's hard to say uh, which is my favorite wildflower, but I could say this is one of my favorite wildflowers in the month of July. I love the five petals and the five sepal pattern. So you have five uh, very light yellow, sometimes white uh, oval-like petals, and they are surrounded by five light green sepals which kind of form a star, and I love that pattern. So you can see that on each plant there is a cluster of flowers, usually between two to six flowers in each um, cluster. It, they are at the apex of the plant. The stem is very uh, stout and erect, and usually there's a top cluster and then there's some side clusters. And so this plant could bloom for about a month, but the flowers all bloom at different times. In addition to the uh, pretty pale uh, white or yellow uh, petals, you also have a golden disc in the center, and around that disc there are 20 uh, bright golden uh, stamens, and those are attract uh, different small bees and uh, insects to the plant for both pollen and nectar. Now the really cool thing about these petals is that they have an ultraviolet uh, pattern to them that is invisible to the human eye, but yet insects can see it. And so this ultra blue violet uh, landing pad is present for the insects and says, hey, come here, land here, and this is where you can come and get some nectar and pollen. So that I think is just amazing part of nature, how God has made this plant visible to uh, insects to come and land on this petal and to help it uh, pollinate and for the insects to find food. The plant has no floral uh, scent to it at all. 
Um, and then as these plants, de or as these flowers develop, they are going to de develop a seed pod. And you can see right here, all of these have a, a seed pod right next to them. So you can see this brown uh, pod that develops. It has tiny little seeds in it. That, and these seeds will either um, blow in the wind or um, they stay viable if they are eaten. So this plant here is uh, loved by deer and by cattle, and so it's often eaten. And um, the seeds, if they go through the, the animal's digestive plant, uh, stay viable once they are pooped out. And that is how this, this plant can be spread. If it's not spread by wind, it can be spread by the assistance by animals. Um, however, this plant probably won't be overgrazed, um, even though the animals like it. It also has, um, it, it, with its taproot, it has rhizomes, uh, kind of a tube, tubular kind of uh, taproot. And so they will grow, um, also spread in the ground by those tubes. And you can kind of have a, a colony of, of prairie um, zinc foil developed by the roots as well. There are a lot of tall prairie sink foil at the Hanson Wildlife Area. Last year when I uh, walked the prairie with Patty, I said, Patty, how come there's so many tall sink foil here? And she said, well, I broadcasted it. This whole prairie, as I said, is a restored prairie. And that means that uh, it used to be tilled and it used to be cropland, and now it's a prairie. So these flowers here were literally hand-casted by love by Patty Hansen, threw these out um, by hand. Um, and that's why there's so many tall prairie sink foil in some particular spots. I love it. Look at the leaf. So the leaf is mostly basal, meaning that it comes from the base of the plant. However, there are some small plants that, uh, that come up um, along the stem as well. This is a compound pinnate leaf. Um, meaning compound, meaning that there's several uh, pieces to the, to the leaf. And then pinnate, meaning that each side match, from the main stem, each side matches. So compound pinnate. One other name for this plant, if I didn't mention, is barren strawberry, meaning that it often resembles that, or people think that it resembles that of a strawberry. Both the flower, the flower does kind of look like a strawberry flower, and then the leaf really truly does uh, remind me of a strawberry plant. This plant is very hairy. The stem is very soft with very um, fine white uh, hairs on it. And then the leaf too is, um, is soft. And ladies um, or gentlemen, if I were out in the prairie and had an emergency need, uh, I would probably go with this leaf here. Maybe, maybe it was a little bigger, but it's very, very soft. You can see it's a light green. And then the backside, because of all the hairs, is a paler green. Now when I talked about it being called a sink foil, meaning five leaves, uh, these leaves, uh, these leaflets have anywhere between three to 11 leaflets. So it really doesn't go with the name sink foil. Um, going back to the flower, that's where I thought sink foil meant was because there's five petals and five sepals. But it really, it is the leaf, um, but these have three to 11 leaflets. So we have the name tall sink foil, prairie sink foil, uh, five fingers, Silverweed, silver meaning coming from all the hairs, making it a, a silvery colored plant. Um, barren strawberry, which I talked about, and then potentilla, potentilla, potentilla. And that comes from uh, all the uh, beliefs that this plant has, um, all the beliefs that this plant is very potent. Um, it has a lot of medical uses and also a lot, a lot of medieval um, superstitions and beliefs in this plant. So let's take a second to look at some of those. This plant has been used as an antiseptic, as an astringic, um, as a fever reducer. Uh, people have made a, a gargle out of it with honey for sore throats. Um, so it's been used a lot for a treatment of um, just general aches and pains. It also has a whole slew of medieval uh, superstitions along with it. So uh, let's see, if you were bewitched, um, someone might hand you a tall sink foil or a sink foil. I don't know that it has to be the tall or the prairie sink foil, but a sink foil, and uh, it would um, 
uh, unbewitch you or if you had a hex on you you could wash and it would get the hex off of you um, it has been used for a love potion it's for safe travels a traveler would press it in a book and uh, and then carry that book and it would give them safe travels uh, fishermen fishermen would make a concoction using sink foil and uh, use it in their nets and it would uh, be a good luck for luck for fishing just so you know it is only 80 degrees out here and she is not that hot she's just being spoiled and thinks that we need to go for a run um, what else so oh and as I said I said a love and a love potion and uh, yeah a lot of good luck and you could um, like I said, you could put it in a book and carry it with you, or you would hang it on your door or on your bedpost, and that would also um, not only be good luck, but it would also keep the evil spirits away from you. If you look at medieval churches or buildings or the um, shields of medieval knights, you'll often see that they have a symbol which is a five-petaled flower. And so sink foil is a symbol that you have mastered your um, five senses. And so it was often used in the medieval times as a symbol of power. Uh, the turnip, uh, the root can also be eaten um, sim similar to a turnip. Uh, but again, don't I? Uh, don't use my videos as a foraging video. All right, well, I hope that you enjoy my favorite July wildflower. Thanks for watching. I am the Iowa Prairie Girl. Uh, I have a lot, of more, lot more videos out there, so please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I hope that you get to get out into the prairie or into the woods or on the lake, and I hope that you see something wonderful. Thanks for watching.